So today I want to talk a little bit about IBCs, uh, international business companies, and why if you're thinking of forming one, or if you're not thinking of forming, forming one, maybe you will be after uh, you know watching this video, why you should form one in the United Arab Emirates, uh, specifically at RAC ICC. So, uh, IBCs were invented to be a very flexible entity that could be used for a wide variety of things, right? They were designed to be used for anything from business transactions to holding companies. And this is a type of company that was invented uh, by financial centers, so-called tax havens like the BVI, the Cayman Islands, the Bahamas, you know, all of these financial centers um, have some form of, of an IBC law. And by offering a, a company with certain advantages, they were able to attract people to form companies there. Um, and a lot of people, you know, have a very common misconception that, you know, any company registered in a financial center is either done to, you know, evade taxes or launder money. This is absolutely not true. Uh, these companies serve a very legitimate purpose um, and they're very, very useful. And I'm going to explain why. So one, they're great holding company entities, right? Um, not just for holding shares in other companies, for example, but for holding real estate anywhere in the world, for owning yachts, airplanes, artwork, whatever you can think of. Um, and the reason why they're such great holding companies is because they generally provide for, for zero tax in, in the jurisdiction where they're formed. Uh, they generally offer quite a bit of privacy, um, due to privacy legislation where, where they're set up. They offer limited liability, so, and, and then the, the combination of the privacy and the limited liability is giving you your, your, your asset protection. Um, and they have a, a low compliance burden, right? Um, meaning they don't have to file, you know, they generally don't have to file like annual tax returns or keep audited accounts or anything like that. Uh, and they're also very, very flexible, which means that you can do uh, a lot with these companies, right? So think about it for multinational companies, for example, that might not use it for, as a holding company, but might use it as an active business entity for a joint venture or, uh, you know, for a specific project or, or, you know, some other type of special purpose vehicle. Because of the flexible IBC law, they can draft the governing documents, you know, to be very creative with, you know, shareholder rights, classes of shares, distribution of profits, all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of use for IBCs. And like I said, IBCs were invented uh, by financial centers, right? Like places like the BVI, the Cayman Islands, stuff like that. But obviously the EU and the OECD and, and you know the US to a certain extent really does not like these jurisdictions uh, because they feel that they're engaged in harmful tax competition. Um, I'm going to get off on a tangent for a second because I hate this term, uh, harmful tax competition, because it's just bullshit. There's no such thing as harmful tax competition. There is just tax competition. Imagine if there was no tax competition. You would have no money left. Those crooks at the government would take it all. They would tax you to death. The only reason why they don't tax you up to 100% is because countries try to lure business and wealth through tax laws. And this provides a balance, right? So don't, you better hope that financial centers never go away because it's only going to be bad for us. Um, but anyway, I'm done with the tangent. But what I wanted to say is now that we've established what the usefulness of an IBC is, right? So you can use your IBC for just about anything, right? You can use it to hold real estate anywhere in the world, for other assets, a stock portfolio, uh, shares in other companies, airplanes, yachts, whatever. You can use it for international business deals. Um, and they provide these benefits, right? Your privacy, asset protection, limited liability, flexibility, and zero taxes. Fantastic. Who doesn't like uh, an IBC? Um, but the typical jurisdictions where these have been formed in the islands have become much less useful due to the campaigns of 
shaming them by the OECD and the EU. You know, they put them on blacklists, um, which makes it more difficult to get bank accounts for these entities. It makes it more difficult to engage in financial transaction with these entities. Because if you try to, for example, wire money from a country that's been shamed by the EU to an e a bank located in the EU country, you're going to have a hard time getting that EU country bank to, to accept the, the, the wire transfer. Um, and the EU and the OECD have actually been pretty successful at reducing the usefulness of uh, the, the traditional financial centers. And they've been able to do that, one, like I said, by shaming them, right? So by shaming them, they've you know, reduced, they've made the perception of, of these countries uh, poor, uh, which means that it's, it's you know, difficult to get banking and conduct financial transactions. They've also instituted something called uh, beneficial owner registers, which is basically if you own 25% or more of a company, you get put in this register. Um, I personally don't have anything against uh, beneficial owner registers. I just think they're useless and they create extra burden for nothing, right? Because the logic behind these beneficial owner registers is, well, everybody owns 25% or more is going to you know, be in this register. So if we're looking for criminals, we just have to put their name in the register. And if they pop up, we know everything they own. But criminals are criminals. They lie. So they're not going to put their name in the register. They're going to put somebody else's name in the register, which makes these, you know, register is completely useless but if you're gonna have a register uh, it shouldn't be public because the public does not need to know who owns everything uh, and one of the problems is that most of these financial centers have either already made their beneficial owner registers public or they've agreed that they will make them public and this is very problematic right one if everybody can go in and look what you own uh, you're going to be a greater target for frivolous lawsuits, for extortions, possibly your kids getting kidnapped. Uh, and, and, and even if it's not something quite that scary, right? If people can see you have large holdings and you're trying to like negotiate a business deal, they're going to demand a higher price because they know you can afford it. Uh, so they completely rob you of your privacy, which, like I said before, was one of the big advantages of forming an IBC and a financial center is that you had all this privacy. Well, now your privacy is gone. Um, which also reduces your asset protection because you're exposed, right? Everybody can see what you have. I mean, one of the biggest um, asset protection tools you can have is privacy uh, because if people don't know what you have, they might think you have nothing or they don't know where it's located, so they're not going to go through the effort of trying to sue you. Um, so, you know, so now they've made it difficult to do banking with these entities uh, and you know, they've taken the privacy element out, which reduces the asset protection greatly. So like, you know, over 50% of the stuff that made forming an IBC in one of the traditional financial centers um, is, is now gone. Um, and now there's an additional complication, the economic substance regulation. So basically it was pushed on low and no tax jurisdictions that you have to implement economic substance regulations. And what the economic substance regulations basically say is, look, if you're going to form a company in, in, a, in a country, like a financial center, like the BVI, for example, and you're going to book your revenue there, you have to have sufficient economic substance in the BVI to justify that. So what does that actually mean? That means the core income generating activities of that company need to be taking place in the BVI. So that means you, know, you need sufficient premises, like an office or a factory or whatever, depending on what your company is doing. You, know, you need sufficient employees and expenditures um, in order to conduct your core income generating activities. Now, in the case of a, of a pure holding company, right? I mean, there's not a lot of activity going on there, right? I mean, a lot of times, uh, sufficient economic substance for a holding company is like you know, a board meeting a year to say, yeah, everything's going fine. You know, maybe more if there's some acquisitions, dispositions going on, or you know, it's a more active type holding company. Um, but nevertheless, you have to have this economic substance in that country, uh, which means at a bare minimum, the board of directors is going to have to travel there. Which getting to the BVI is no easy feat when you're not in coronavirus lockdown. But try getting there now in coronavirus lockdown, right? So. It's very inconvenient, even in a normal world, to travel to one of these financial centers to uh, meet your economic substance requirements just for a basic holding company. 
Now think about this in terms of it's, you know, not just a holding company and this is a more active business, right? You have to find office space in the BVI. You need to find competent employees. You have to find enough employees um, in, in order to be able to, to, to do your core income generating activities there. So this really makes traditional financial centers, you know, like in the islands, uh, very unattractive, right? I mean, first, you've gotten rid of like 50% of the benefits because banking's difficult, privacy's gone, which reduces your asset protection, and now you actually got to do business there. So what's left, right? Um, and basically what you're left with is Hong Kong, uh, Singapore, and, and the UAE, the United Arab Emirates, where I live. Now, let's just, I'm not even going to get into Hong Kong for a minute because Hong Kong has been embroiled in political unrest. You know, they've had all these protests. And now the Chinese government is, you know, eroding their autonomy daily. Like, so I don't think Hong Kong has much of a future as a financial center, which basically leaves us with Singapore. Now, Singapore is a well-regulated country. Um, they do have an income tax, but it's only levied on profits earned within Singapore. So by and large, you know, uh, depending on, on, on your business, Singapore is generally going to function like a no-tax country or a very, very low-tax country. But again, it's, it's not necessarily known for its privacy. It's, it's, it's very expensive. Um, uh, it's not terribly convenient to get to uh, unless you're in Asia. And if you need to bring in workers, it, it's not so easy to do. Now, the UAE, on the other hand, um, you know, this is a real economy here. I mean, beyond financial services and, and tourism, I mean, this is a real, a real economy. And we have zero taxes. Uh, it is very privacy minded. So for example, at RAC ICC, they have a beneficial owner register, but it is not public. So a government can get access to it, you know, if you're doing something shady, but as long as you're not doing something shady, you're fine. Um, so, you know, the UAE still ticks all the boxes that the traditional financial centers did and then some, right? So, one, it hasn't been shamed like the financial centers. Because it's a real economy, you have a lot of banking options here and they don't have ridiculous minimums like they do in a lot of other countries. Um, the, the UAE does not have a public beneficial owner register. Um, there, now, some free zones do. RAC ICC does not and, and I've spoken with the uh, the leadership there and they're not going to have a public beneficial owner register so your privacy is maintained your asset protection is maintained and to strengthen your asset protection you know they have very stringent asset protection limited liability laws in rack icc um, and it's also easy to meet your economic substance burden here because you have a lot of available office space factories warehouses whatever you need you have a large labor pool um, you know, you can get office, you, you know, you can get premises that are super expensive to super cheap. If you need to bring people in to work, it's no problem to do that. You have, you know, a lot of uh, top notch professionals here. It's geographically convenient uh, to a lot of places in the world. And even if it's not, Emirates flies pretty much everywhere. And so you can fly here in style. Um, and so it's not difficult to get your board of directors here. Well, okay, coronavirus times is not so easy right now, but in, in normal circumstances, you know, it's easy to get people to travel here. Um, it's easy to meet those economic substance burdens. And additionally, you have tax treaties, which most financial centers don't have or only have a very limited number of. And that is very important, especially if you have a holding company or, you know, some type of an SPV or something like that that's gonna be receiving interest and, and dividends or royalties from other countries because you can have with reduced withholding tax rates coming into the UAE. Um, and additionally, because of those uh, uh, tax treaties, a lot of other countries give a higher status to a UAE based company like a RAC ICC company than they would, you know, a, a BVI company. So in my personal opinion, um, I, I really believe that the UAE is the jurisdiction for IBCs. They tick all the boxes, right? They meet all the international standards. They have zero taxation. They have tax treaties. They have a real economy. So the point of this video is just to tell you uh, a couple of things. IBCs aren't just for shady business. They have a legitimate business purpose. Most of them 
And when I say most, I mean like 99.9% .9 are used for legitimate business purposes. Um, and if you're thinking of forming one, don't jump right into the BVI or the Caymans where you normally go. Take a serious look at the UAE and especially Rack ICC. It's better. And we can help you uh, set up the company if you need help. Check us out online, www.esquiregroup.com or shoot us an email at info at Peace.